Hello and welcome back to the sew along for McCall's 8121, this cute little moto jacket that we've been sewing together this week, really, for sure sewing, but we've also been working on it for quite some time because we had a lot of prep work that we had to do together as well. If you're just now joining us, I've got a list in the description box of all the videos that you've missed so far. We are doing Friday's checklist, which today is all about the collar, the lining, facing, yeah, all of those things. So it's gonna be a big day. We're gonna get lots of different elements put together and then it, the jacket's really gonna start shaping up. We're even hemming the jacket today. Um, so th there's a lot to do. Uh, I've got the chapters, so you can pick up where you left off. You don't have to skim through the video, just go through the chapters and find the one that's closest to where you left off. So let's get to working on this collar. Let's head over to the work table and get some. All right, so kicking things off today with a little bit of collar construction and installation. Our first step is to stay stitch the jacket neck line between the large circles. So remember stay stitching from like our very first step of this sew along, we're gonna do the same thing there. And while we're at our machines, we're gonna be taking our collar pieces, which are numbers 16 and 17, and we're gonna be placing them right sides together. And we're gonna be stitching around all three sides, but not this inner curve, just the outer curve. Um, trim seam allowances, we're gonna clip the corners, all of that kind of stuff. Turn it right side out, press it, and baste the raw edges together. So kind of a lot of steps there. Um, also, if you're top stitching, after that is when you will top stitch. So I'll meet you back here after I have this sewn together and I'll show you about um, pinning it to your neckline. Okay, before we sew the bottom, like the outer uh, curved edge of the collar, I wanna point out that they are not the same length. The, what are they calling it? The upper collar, number 16, is a little bit bigger than number 17, the under collar. So you just kinda have to pin um, every so often and you're gonna be stretching this under collar ever so slightly to get everything to lay flatly. Now, we're not trying to get them to lay exactly the same at the raw edge. We're mostly concerned about the seam line. The seam lines will match even if the raw edges do not, okay? So, put those together, match your centers, match your um, the notches that are provided, and you will be rocking and rolling. Just take your time when you sew you know, stopping every so often to make sure everything's laying nice and flat. All right, and after you've got it turned right side out, you're gonna match these raw edges. And again, when you do that, it is going to create a little bit of a bubble on the outside to where the outer fabric is gonna be rolling to the inside ever so slightly. This is a beautiful collar construction and it is gonna create such a stunning rolled collar when we're done. I'm really excited to see um, that in a McCall's pattern. Now we're gonna be placing, attaching the collar to the jacket. It is going to be your instinct to do these right sides together. And that is wrong. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a lot of time and I'm gonna repeat myself 45,000 times to make sure that you do not do this incorrectly because Full disclosure, this is the third time I'm attaching this collar because I keep doing it backwards because my brain is telling me that things go right sides together, but not this time. They are gonna go wrong side of the collar to the right side of the jacket. That way, when you sew these and you turn the collar under, that's what you see, okay? So wrong side of the collar 
to the right side of the jacket. Now, go ahead, mark your center. And before you do anything else, we're stopping again, triple checking. Do you have the lining touching the outer part of your jacket? Do you only see pretty fabric? Do you not, you should not see any lining. If you see lining, it's upside down. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Oh, we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it. <clears throat> okay, so now we need to match big dots like so. Then there should be a little notch. There's one there and the one on our lining is here. Okay, little notches. Those get matched up. And then we should have a big triangle on the collar piece that gets matched up with our shoulder seam. Pulling that around. Okay. And you are going to have a bigger jacket. Um, than collar and I am wondering if mine is so big well probably because I've sewn the collar three times now um but also because we stay stitched the neckline on step 34. Um I think if I were doing this again I would stay stitch all of the neckline pieces in step one. Just go ahead and get that out of the way. We are working with this a lot. We've done tried it on you know all of that so um, if you're doing this not with me and you're kind of just watching and following along for whenever you can get to sew yours, go ahead and stay stitch in step one. Write that in the instructions or in your workbook. Um, that'll save you a lot of trouble. But for those of us that are here now with various states of stretched out necklines, um, just do what you can. We're going to make it work. The collar is going to cover up a lot of this, okay? So it's not like this is gonna, you know, look terrible in the end, no matter how it comes together. Um, just do the best you can. Through here, through the shoulder and the um, center, or shoulder to shoulder actually, it should be pretty good because that part is flatter. It's not on as much of a curve um, like the shoulder seam is, so. You can pin that like that, come around to the next shoulder and do this like so. And make sure that whole shoulder seam is kind of flattened and then pair it together like that. That'll be a lot easier. We're trying to like curve the collar around and make you know, make this more of a um, curved situation than it is flat currently. But again, we do not care what's happening at the raw edge, okay? I'm gonna keep saying that. All we care about is what's happening at the seam line, at this stay stitching line. If that looks flat, then it doesn't matter what's happening anywhere else. You pull this down just a smidge. Okay, and then come around and finish off your big circle and your small dots or small notches. I'm gonna say it one last time. Do you only see pretty fabric? In all of that easing in, did you somehow get your collar turned upside down? You should only see pretty fabric, neckline all the way down, okay? If you sew it on upside down at this point, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> I've done all I can. I've done all I can. All right. So we are basting this guy down all the way around basting stitch. Go nice and slow and that will help the feed dogs distribute the gathers. Even paying this down if that helps you not go fast. Okay. How did we do? Now, at this point, when you turn this up, you should see the lining. That way, when you fold this back, all you see is pretty. And you can see how that seam is completely covered. So again, try not to stress about it too much, but we do wanna try and do a decent job of removing puckers. Like that's a very big one, so I'm gonna go in and fix that one. But all of these through here, well, that one's kinda of big too. So I'll get that one 
This looks good, looks good, looks good all the way around. And then all of this, there's one big one there. So I'm gonna get that one as well. But honestly, if you can't get them out, um, this is what our collar is gonna end up looking like. Let me get it on there correctly. And you can see, you genuinely cannot see that seam. So don't stress about it too much. <clears throat> Where is my shoulder seam? Way up here. Okay, so this is what the jacket is gonna end up looking like. That seam is completely concealed, okay? If you do have big puckers though, like that big one I showed you, that's why I'm gonna take that out because you will see that one. But all of these little small ones, guys, I promise you're not gonna see them at all. But can we not just like take a minute, <laughs> especially me because I've done this freaking collar three times, <sighs> okay, it looks great. It's worth it. The construction of this collar is amazing. All of that easing in, all of that like things aren't matching up 100% and we, we have to make them fit is what is creating this beautiful rolled neckline. And it is going to lay so beautifully around our necks. I'm so impressed that McCall's has a collar like this. Um, love, 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 love this construction so much. This is giving me a lot of good feelings that this jacket is going to turn out amazing. All right, so I'm going to finish my uh, picking out my puckers and fixing those. And that's it. We're not going to do any more stitching to the neckline. We're just going to leave it with just the basting stitch and then move on to our lining and facing. All right, so lining and facing. We are going to be taking piece number 19, which is the right front facing, which should be one of our interfaced pieces. Yes, so number 19 here. Um, it's going to be your main fabric interfaced. And we are stitching that to... Oh no, we're ease, what are we doing? We're ease stitching right front lining, number 18. I skipped a step. So this is number 18, it's our lining. We should have one of them, right? So there is a dedicated right side. So pin to mark the right front, We or mark the right side. We do not have to mark this one, number 19, because there's a, obviously right side and a wrong side. All right, so number 18 and number 19, what we're working on. We are gonna be taking number 18 and E stitching between the two notches. So there's a notch here and then about four inches down, there's another knot. Okay, and while we are over at our machine, we're gonna go ahead and stay stitch the right side here. So an E stitch is gathering stitches, long length, um, 5.0 on my machine, the longest stitch that your machine has, that's an E stitch. Stay stitch is your regular stitch length. Both of them are done at the seam line, okay? E-stitch the lining here, stay-stitch the lining over here. Once that's done, you're going to be laying number 18 and number 19 on top of each other, right sides together with um, this long edge, okay? So you should have an armhole looking thing, armhole looking thing. This whole long edge is what we are gonna be stitching next using that ease stitching to ease in um, in this little baby curve that we have. I'm gonna show you on this one in detail and then you can apply the same exact technique to the other side. So I'm matching up my shoulder seam. I am matching up my notch, my first notch matching up the lower notch, not paying any attention to what's happening to this lining underneath. Okay, we actually don't have to match all the way to the lower edge. We need to go to within four inches of the lower edge on both. Okay, so that means this guy here, four inches, one, two, three, four. So we just need to make sure to stitch past this point and not anything below it. Okay, and then through here, this, like I said, is not that extreme on this one, but you are gonna pull up these gathering stitches, this ease stitch, and you are just gonna make sure that it's nice and flat. We're not caring what's happening at the raw edge. If you guys learn nothing else from today's sew along, it should be that. Okay, and then go to your machine, start sewing, sewing here, um, and so all the way up this way, and then we're going to be pressing the seam allowances toward the lining. 
All right, so once we have all that done, so we've got our piece number two, side panel. We've got dedicated right sides. So I am going to pin the right side of the fabric. And then again, like we did on the front or on the main part of the jacket too, there is a right way and a wrong way to attach this. So we have a single notch here and we wanna make sure that that matches up with not the double notches, but rather the single notch. So this is the wrong piece. If I try and put this down right sides together, it's a double notch matched up with a single notch, which we don't want. So we're gonna be matching this up like this, matching our single notches, our hems all the way up here, just like we did in step, well, I don't know, the first day, whenever we were assembling the outer part of the jacket, okay? Okay, so then you're going to have that done. Then we're going to set this aside. Number two for the other side, we're setting it aside. We are grabbing piece number 20, which is our left front lining. And just like we just did, uh, we are going to be E stitching and stay stitching. So it gets E stitched between the two notches here. It even says ease. So that's your long stitch length and then stay stitched here, which is your regular stitch length. So you're gonna do both of those to piece number 20. Once you get that done, then again, these long edges opposite the arm curve um, get stitched together. So, and this one, you can really see how different, I mean, we have got a concave curve and a convex curve if I've ever seen one. Whereas with this, these kind of matched up pretty easily. They look very similar. So the ease stitching through here is gonna be paramount so that you are able to get these two things to go together beautifully. Okay, and then once we have that, and then this will be on here like so, and then you guessed it, we take our other piece too, and we lay that on here. And again, we should have a single notch matching up with a single notch. All right, so we have our fronts, our front linings and facings, gorge, setting those aside, grabbing our back piece. And you can see on the tissue paper that there is information about a stitching line, the center back is not on the fold, yada, yada. That is because we are creating this little um, pleat that is going to create a lot of wearing ease, but not affect the way the lining fits in the neckline, shoulders, hem, all of that. But all through here, we're going to be able to like move our shoulders forward and this is going to spread and come back together um, as we do that. You see it a lot in like men's jackets, but not for us women for some reason, but that's all about to change today. So um, I'm gonna put a pin down here just to make sure that I can keep all of this in line. And then as you can imagine, we're going to our sewing machine. We're gonna stitch down here, back stitch. We're gonna start stitching here, back stitch and come down to the raw edge. Sometimes they will have you do a regular stitch length here and then change to a basting stitch um, just to help you get that accurate crisp uh, pressing line. So if you want to do that, go ahead. You just change to a longer stitch here and then come back to your regular stitch line here. But then press all that to the left and then stay stitch your curved side edges. And then as you can imagine, we are attaching this seam to the little nugget here, matching up double notches as you go. And then
All right, it's getting exciting. We're putting our lining on. Okay, so we are going to, again, stay stitch the lining between the large circles. So go to your machine, stay stitch, just like we did a few steps ago. And then and then this whole thing gets placed right sides together and we are going to be going all the way from the hem. Well, I should say not the hem, but the small dot. So there's a small dot on the facing and there's a small dot on your jacket. And so that's where you're starting your lining. And then it comes all the way to the top encasing your zipper and then all the way around your neck edge and then back down the other side and the other sides get matched up. The hems of the other ones get matched up exactly. So then trim everything, clip your corners, turn it right side out, and then baste your arm size. So here all that is, step by step. All right, we're gonna do a quick little hem and we are done for the day. So the hem is one and a half inches and I have shared this little trick before, but if you've missed it, this is how I mark my hems. So if the hem is one and a half inches and then I take my little ruler and I measure up three inches because if you were to mark the one and a half inch mark and then you go to turn this up, well, you can't see your mark anymore. So I always mark three inches up so that I get that perfect one and a half inch every single time. So I'm gonna do that all the way around. We are gonna press that up. Um, we're gonna baste close to the folds. We're gonna baste through here. And then we're gonna sew the hem in place. Now there are times, because this is on a curve, where we might need to do some more easing. I know you guys are probably like, I never wanna ease anything ever again in my life. I feel you, um, but this is the last little bit. So we're gonna do that and let's meet back here after that. All right, so now we are gonna be catch stitching the facings to the hem, which means this little thingamajig here that's hanging over the bottom part of your hem is going to overlap your facing. And so we need to make that nice and pretty. So this gets turned up and then kind of folded over your facing and then all of that gets hand stitched down. I mean, I guess you could do it by machine, but then obviously you would see it on the right side. So it's completely up to you how you want to finish that. 
Oh, but it has to be within this little lining situation. If it sticks out like this, then obviously you're gonna have a raw edge. So turn it all the way back. It's more of like a diagonal. Yes, there we go. That way when we stitch our lining down, it will conceal this and you will have a really pretty finish there. So again, you can do it by machine if you want, um, but do it by hand, guys. It'll be so much prettier on the right side, you know? And then they don't actually show us the other side, so I'm kind of like making it up, but I think what happens is you turn all of this flat and then this gets turned up along the 5 eighths and then gets folded back over again. Yeah, that looks pretty. I feel like we could have done that by machine when we when we did the, like sew the lining to the thing, right? Can't you just go like this? Was I supposed to do that? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay, so I think if I undid all of this stitching that I already did, you could easily, I don't know how I missed that. Um, but we're just gonna do it this way, just as easy. I'll have my hand stitching stuff out anyways. So we get this little number. I did stitch across that, but it didn't catch the hem. I don't know, I don't know what happened. Something, something happened there. Um, okay, so now we have that done. We're gonna assume that this has all been hand stitched down. Looks nice and beautiful. This gets turned under, and then the actual lining itself also gets turned under five eighths of an inch. So again, if we're doing my little special math thing, I am gonna do, um, but it gets turned under this way. Okay, so turn all of this. Lift this up out of the way. So we've got the wrong side of the facing, facing up. And two five-eighths, five-eighths times two is one and a quarter. So I'll mark one and a quarter all the way around. And then I'll have my perfect five-eighths inch hem. I will press that all the way around. And then pretending that we've done that. Here is that marking, pretending we've done this all the way around. All of this gets slip stitched, that's hard to say, slip stitched down, but it doesn't get slip stitched, I still can't say it, slip stitched down um, in line with the hem. Okay, so your raw edge is, the raw edge of the hem up here is actually what gets met up with the raw edge of the lining. And when you do that, it creates this, fold at the bottom of your jacket again for wearing ease. So if you're lifting your arms up, moving around, this is going to be able to shift up and give you that little bit of extra wearing ease down here at the hem. So all of this gets hand sewn. Um, there is a process called bagging, aligning. I don't love it. Um, it's just not a personal preference of mine. I think it always turns out a million times better when you just do it by hand. So put on a good movie. The Oscars are on this weekend, like a lot of good movies out and go ahead and just slip stitch this down all the way around. And so how are we feeling at the end of this video? By now you should have what looks a lot like a vest. <laughs> It should look like a moto vest, which probably is super cool in and of itself, depending on what fabric you use. Me, however, though, I want to put the sleeve on. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'll meet you back here tomorrow. I'm going to post on Saturday. Um, so I'll meet you back here tomorrow where we're going to sew the sleeve and then you'll have the whole weekend to kind of finish this up on your own time.